Hey guys, uh, here we are talking about section 2 of chapter 15, looking at the characteristics of stars. And we want to find out how do we classify stars, how do we measure the distances to them, and what is a, an HR diagram called a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, and how do we use it. So starting off with classifying stars, uh, the first thing you want to look at is the color. Um, all stars are huge spheres of glowing gas, mostly hydrogen as we talked about. And the color is kind of deceiving when it comes to stars. Um, it, when we look at the cooler stars, um, we would think that like, you know, cool, cool colors for us are usually, you know, blues and so on. Uh, and it's actually the opposite. Uh, it turns out that the hottest stars are blue and the coolest stars are red. Um, our sun, which is kind of an average size, uh, is yellow, so it's kind of in between the two. So hot is blue, medium is yellow, and kind of cool is red, as we see in those three examples on the bottom. Both Rigel and Betelgeuse there are in the constellation Orion. They're two of the brightest stars in the sky. And then other characteristics we'll look at include things like temperature, size, uh, the composition, what are they made out of, and their brightness. So looking at the size, um, stars really have a wide variety when it comes to size. Um, uh, once again, our sun is kind of a medium-sized star, but there are things known as giants and even supergiants that can be 10 to 100 or even 1,000 times greater uh, than the size of our own sun. And there's even smaller uh, stars known as white dwarfs, which are sort of the, the, the last stages of a star. And so we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about those in, uh, in the next section. And then there's uh, looking at what the stars are made out of, um, what is their composition. And one of the things we can do is we can, when we look at a star, we can use something called a spectrograph. And a spectrograph uh, is looking at the light that is coming from the star, the white light. And remember we talked about how white light is made up of all of the colors of the rainbow, right? Red through purple as we see here. And whatever uh, light or whatever elements are uh, being produced or that the star is made out of, um, we could actually figure out from the light coming from that star what type of elements are there. And so what we look at are these patterns here where we see uh, these black lines. And these indicate that that particular gas or that particular element is missing um, from the spectrum. And that means if we see this pattern, we know that there's hydrogen present. If we see this pattern and this pattern, we know that there's hydrogen and helium. If we see these two missing, sodium is, is uh, present, and, and then each element, such as calcium and so on down the line, um, whatever lines are missing, they all have a particular pattern. And then from that, we can tell what elements uh, the stars are made out of. Uh, it's pretty neat. You can tell this from millions and millions of miles away. Then uh, the brightness of the star is also a characteristic, and parallax is uh, one way we can use, uh, well, it's, it's sort of a technique we can use to see just how far away stars are and how bright stars are um, a little bit as well. So parallax, if you've ever uh, you know, done that little trick where you kind of blink one eye and then blink the other eye and your point of view changes a little bit, um, and uh, we'll do a little exercise with this tomorrow, but the idea is, is that um, the closer you are to something, and if you do this little trick, um, then the more uh, that something is going to change positions. And the farther something is away, and you do that little back and forth eye trick, uh, the less it's going to move. So in this case, here we are in January, and in January, uh, the stars above, A, B, C, and D, have this pattern, right? So looking from here, looking in this point of view, we see that B is on the left, and then C, and then D, and then A would be on the right. Um, and so that's the pattern that we see here. A, of course, is a little brighter because it's kind of closer to us here. But then uh, six months later, or seven months later in July, we see that the pattern of stars has changed. Uh, and that's because our point of view has changed, right? We've moved to the other side of the sun. And so now when we look up at these stars, we still we see that B is still on the left, but now A has sort of repositioned itself. It is the next star that we see, and here it is. And then C and D follow to the right. Uh, and that's all because our point of view has changed, and the fact that star A 
is closer to us um, actually means that it, it moves more in the night sky depending on how much we move around the sun here. So we can tell, we can use this parallax to measure distances to nearby stars. Of course, you know, give or take a few hundred light years. Um, so it's not the, the best method, but it's a good method uh, and it does help us narrow some distances down. Uh, and speaking of light years, what is a light year? Well, if you think about it, right, a light year, it is how far or how long uh, it takes light to travel in one year. And it's a very long distance. It's about nine and a half trillion kilometers, right? So that's how far something going the speed of light can travel in one year. So that's sort of our new distance when it comes to the universe, light years. It's well, well beyond uh, the astronomical unit that we used in the last chapter. So we'll talk more about that later. Next up, the brightness of the stars. Um, so brightness depends on two major factors. The size of the star, obviously bigger stars are going to shine brighter uh, because they're producing probably more energy. And then the temperature of the stars. We talked about how some stars can be, you know, cooler than others or hotter than others. So generally the hotter stars are going to burn the brightest. Uh, and so hot stars and big stars are the brightest stars in our sky, but not always, as we'll see. And then there's two ways to classify brightness. There's apparent brightness, which is the brightness when we're looking from Earth, um, how bright is it to us from Earth, from our point of view? And of course, the sun would have the greatest apparent brightness because it's you know so close to us. So it blocks out all of the other stars. Um, so its apparent brightness is very high. But in reality, if we were able to line up all of the stars at the same distance away from Earth, then we would be able to see their absolute brightness, sort of their actual brightness. Um, and so uh, our sun would fall, you know, somewhere in the middle. It's not the brightest, but it's not the dimmest. And there are plenty of other stars that are much, much brighter than our own sun. But because they're so far away, their brightness, you know, is a lot less. And we can use this diagram to uh, sort of tell us, you know, or predict maybe which stars would be the brightest. Um, and this is called the HR diagram or the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. And it also has classifications for the different types of stars. You see, we've got giants up in this neck of the woods. We've got super giants. We've got white dwarfs down here. And then this little middle area here, these are known as main sequence stars. And most stars in the night sky uh, are main sequence stars including our sun, which is right here. And the way this diagram works, you've got temperature on the x-axis down here, and you've got brightness on the y. And so as we go higher and higher, brightness is increasing. And then the temperature uh, increases as we go from right to left, so a little bit backwards from our normal graphs. Um, but you can see that the hottest stars, right, are in the blue area, and then we go to, to white next, and then yellow is getting even cooler, and then red, these are the coolest ones. Uh, and then, of course, the, the brightest stars are up here. And so Polaris, there's the North Star, very bright one. Betelgeuse and Rigel, those are the ones that we see in Orion. Interestingly, we see Betelgeuse over here is very cool. It's, it's in the red zone, yet it is still very bright. It's very high in the brightness scale, and that's because it's so darn big. Um, and and it's, I guess it's relatively close. But our sun, once again, kind of right in the middle. Um, and so this question here, what kind of star is our sun? Well, we would call it a main sequence star there, right? Just like 90% of all of the other stars in the sky. We see white dwarfs too, interestingly, um, are actually pretty hot, uh, not so bright, uh, but pretty hot. You would think they would be brighter, but they're really, really small, which is why they're down at the bottom of the, the brightness scale. So they are very hot, but not very big. And that does it. Uh, we'll talk about section three uh, the following night. And so, uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow in class. Um, there won't be a quiz for this one. Um, so uh, don't worry about that. Just take notes on this and we'll be good to go. Talk to you guys later.